King John has gone down as one of the most unpopular kings in English history. In fact, some have called him the worst king to ever reign. Bad King John. The character traits that have been written down about John read like a Disney villain, which he became in the movie Robin Hood. He has been called short, fat, jealous, cruel, self-indulgent, treacherous, avaricious, and exceptionally manipulative. But was John really that bad? Some think John has been given a bad rap, and that when he inherited the kingdom from his brother Richard, also known as Richard the Lionheart, that what he got was a complete mess because Richard has spent as little as six months in his entire ten-year reign as king in England. It was written of John during his day that he was a very bad man, more cruel than all others. Whenever he could, he told lies rather than truth. He set his barons against one another whenever possible and was very happy when he saw hate between them. He hated and was jealous of all honorable men. It greatly displeased him when he saw anyone acting well. He was brimful of evil qualities. John abhorred anyone telling him what to do, and so for six years he fought with the Pope, and at one point he was excommunicated. In 1208, the Pope placed an interdict on England, which made it so that no religious services could be performed, no marriages, burials, or baptisms could be done at all. When John took the throne, he was one of the most powerful princes in Europe. He had inherited a great empire, and in five years, he had lost most of the land given to him. When he died, England was in the middle of a civil war. By 1215, John's people were so fed up with his unchecked power and heavy taxation, they rose in rebellion and forced him to sign a document that curtailed the king's power, the first of its kind, the Magna Carta. John died a painful death just shy of his 50th birthday of dysentery. He had been experiencing horrific bouts of bloody diarrhea, fever, and exhaustion. The doctors prescribed the letting of blood to no avail. It was said the night before he died on the 18th of October, 1216, that the wind was so fierce that people were afraid that their houses would fall down. The morning after King John died, his heart and his intestines were removed to be interred at Croxton Abbey. The rest of his body was embalmed and prepared for its hundred-mile journey to Worcester Cathedral, which he would be taken to by an army of foreign mercenaries. John was buried without a crown, unlike many kings before him. Even his brother Richard had been buried with a crown, but John, it is said, he lost the crown jewels in an area called the Wash a few days before his death. John was laid to rest between the shrines of two saints, St. Wolfston and St. Oswald. Eventually, a new sarcophagus with an effigy was made around 1228 by his son that was brightly painted and encrusted with jewels. Over the next few centuries, the paint faded and the jewels were removed. John's tomb was opened several times in the 16th century and again in 1797. At that time, there was an engraver who had written a history of Worcester and thought that the inscriptions on the tomb were not correct and he believed that the king's bones were somewhere else entirely. He was wrong. When the effigy was opened, King John's body was indeed there with rotting scraps off of the original embroidered robe that he had been buried in and a sword in a leather scabbard laying next to his body. An account was written of what they found. The body was found to have been adjusted in the coffin precisely as the stone figure of the tomb. It was found that many of the bones had been moved 
the jaw was by the elbow, all of the teeth were missing except for four, and both of the hands were gone. The tomb stayed open for two days, where throngs of people flooded the cathedral to catch a glimpse of bad King John. It was such a hullabaloo that authorities were called in and they were forced to reseal the tomb. During the openings of John's tomb, pieces of fabric, teeth, and even a thumb were taken as a souvenir. In 1957, what is believed to be the thumb was returned to the cathedral. <laughs> 